the difference that makes a person unique from another person is something that they have that someone else doesn't. We like to say that there, when God created the universe, he created each and every person in it as a unique and distinctive person. That means that you are different from someone else and someone else is different from you. Each individual being an individual. We like to call that unique and distinctive. In other words, there's something that makes you unique, but there's also something that makes you distinctive. So that way, when God said that in heaven, once you die and you're there in heaven, that as you were known, so shall you be known. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, made a distinction. He made a difference. He chose to separate himself from any other person that would ever exist or ever be alive. And in doing so, he became either the greatest teacher in the world or something more than a teacher. And in the overview of looking at the Sermon on the Mount before we really get into you know, the devotional part is that you need to understand that it is unique. It is distinctive. There is a difference that the Sermon on the Mount stands alone by itself different than any other teaching in the universe. The reason being is that nowhere else does anyone say literally and show and demonstrate by their own life and living it that not only did they say what they meant, but they lived what they said and they proved that it was true. When Jesus did that, he didn't offer up an idealism that said, oh look, this is a lofty idea that no one can ever attain to and no one can ever do. This is a pie in the sky that someday in the sweet by and by you'll attain to whatever reason and why and you'll know by then that it is I. No, Jesus said bluntly, if you read it, do you read it? Jesus said bluntly that everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. And he said, everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken unto him as a wise man. The difference being foolish and wise, because circumstances would come in your life that will either devastate you or will reassure you that the difference that makes you a Christian is the Sermon on the Mount. It is doing the things that Jesus said, because it really isn't the Sermon on the Mount. It's the sayings of Jesus. It's what Jesus said, this I would have you to do. This is what I want you to do. When Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, he had an agenda. He had a plan. He had a purpose and a design for every person that follows him. When the crowds were following him, he said things that they couldn't handle. He said, eat my body, drink my blood. And they went away sorrowful. He said, if no man hates his father and mother, or to the rich man, he said, sell all that you have and follow me. And the rich man could not do that. Because there are things that Jesus said that's going to cause you to decide which way you will go. You will determine in your own heart and in your own mind and in your own thoughts as you listen to the words that Jesus said, whether or not you are his disciple or whether you're just a good, good time, good feeling follower or whether you're someone who's trying to understand and get to the point of what Jesus is saying. Because literally, it involves salvation of your soul. It involves changing the world so that they would be saved and not condemned. Because see, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but he challenged everyone's righteousness and standing before God by saying, this is my standard. Your standard will set over here and say, is it perfection? But my standard is this, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And this is perfection in that he loves and God is love. 
we read the Sermon on the Mount, as we study it in a devotional setting, we only take little portions of it because you can't deal with it all. It's too big. It's too heavy. It's too hard. It's too challenging. It's too all-encompassing that makes you despair of ever having become the reality of what Jesus said we should be and we must be in order to be into the kingdom of God. But as we take it a little bit at a time, we understand that he is growing us and molding us and causing us to become formed into the fashion and the image of what God intended us to be from the very beginning and what he could only do in us as he placed his spirit inside us, causing us to live not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So in the overview of the Sermon on the Mount, it's usually contained in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, and a little bit before and a little bit after. And One of the things that made the difference in what Jesus said and how he said it was that in verse 28, when he was done, you see, it wasn't just the disciples that were there, which a lot of people sometimes will say, oh, well, this is for the disciples. And, you know, there were 12 of them, and they were special, and they were given some unique quality, and it was only for them to do and to be so that they could be going out into the world and creating churches and causing this new found religion to spring forward called Christianity. No. Because in Matthew 7, 28, it says, and it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Notice a few interesting things that he says, though. The people. Wait a minute. Can we flip back a few chapters? Can we look at Matthew chapter 5? And seeing the multitudes, he went up unto a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And so most people say, oh, well, it was for the disciples. But let's be real. And it came to pass, when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Why? Because he taught them as one having authority. Now, if he's teaching and the people are there. Obviously, what started as the disciples hearing extended to the people, and the people came up and wanted to hear what he had to say. It was that important to them. They knew Jesus was saying something profound to his disciples. He didn't hide it. He didn't make it, oh, well, this is an exclusive group. I'm sorry. It's only for these people that are mature and are better than the average believer. No, because he starts it with, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bingo! Guess what? It's not for a select few. It's for all of us. Because the Sermon on the Mount is something that makes a difference in you, that causes a difference through you, that causes something to be changed about you with everyone that you meet and you come into contact with, because you have to do something with the Sermon on the Mount. You have to change it. You have to change it. You can't live it, can you? Do you love your enemies? Do you take care of the neighbor that's next door to you? Do you literally lay down your life for your friends and your enemies? Do you take care of that, oh, that child molester that can't live next door to me? Or, oh, that pornography person that's over there? Or, oh, my God, that person that fell from grace? No. I can't. But the question that makes the difference is, are you sure? Can I? What did Jesus say is always going to be the bottom line, the bottom line of every foundation that we lay when we are examining in a devotional way what Jesus said in regards to the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, what Jesus said is the issue. You are going to stand before Jesus. What Jesus said is the issue he's going to require from you. Are you hearing this? Because if you are, then you know whatever Jesus said is going to be the priority you're going to want to build your life upon so that these sayings of his would be like a foundation stone that you could build upon. And then you could go do your ministry and you could go do your 
athlete's athletic endeavors and say, oh, well, God told me to do it. Or you can go do your businesses and say, I give a portion to God. Or you can go do your church. Or you can go do your your family. Or you can go do your divorce. Or you can go do go do your sin. Or you can go do whatever it is that you choose to do. But the foundation, the reality of the foundation of where you're building your house, who you are inside as well as who you are outside, is going to be on these statements that Jesus said. Because that's what it's all about, is that the reality of salvation is based upon what Jesus said and what Jesus did. And the Sermon on the Mount was directed straight to the people's heart and busting them right within their own righteousness and saying, look, this is what God requires and this is what I say unto you. And Jesus, in making that bold and direct statement, said, I am the author and finisher of your faith, because if salvation has come through my sacrifice, then I now have judgment. And the reality of the judgment comes from what Jesus said. And why do I say it so seriously? And why do we lay such a long foundation of... Oh my God, why are you telling me all this seriousness, you know, and you don't get into the blessed part to start with? Very simple. Because let's go back to the end of the book again in Matthew 7. Let's look then at Matthew 7.23. Just for a second, because we've already done this before, but we'll say one scripture about it. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Who were they? Who were the ones that were working iniquity? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out demons in thy name? Have we not been Christian in name? Are we not Christian? What's the difference? A worker of iniquity. God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward things. There isn't one person who isn't really some type of iniquitous person because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the reality of what Jesus said we could do and be and become is all laid out very simply as a foundation to build upon. A man building a house. What kind of house are you building? A den of iniquity? A den of spiritual gifts that look wonderful? But did Jesus tell you to? Or are you doing these sayings of mine, as Jesus said? That's what the difference is. And the difference is always going to put you into some kind of self-analysis where you have to lay it out on the Word of God. And you have to say, looking at the Sermon on the Mount, as we do this devotional throughout the year, what did Jesus say? What's the difference in these words that he's saying to me? Am I a worker of iniquity? Or am I building my house upon these sayings of his and doing them? Faith is good, but faith without works is dead. And the works of faith are those things that Jesus said to do. That's simple. It doesn't boil down to having faith to move a mountain. It doesn't have to do with all these things. It has to do with what did Jesus say? And that's going to make the difference in your life today, as it does in mine, always. Because every day we need to know, what did Jesus say? What did he say to you? What is he saying? The difference between a Christian and a person who is building his house upon a rock, bottom line, is what Jesus said. <laughs>